it's it's kind of fun to come this morning with uh, Jake. Jake, come up here. So I've got my oldest boy Jake here. So uh, he's he's in a soccer tournament right now. He's only 13, but he's almost got me by height already. So uh, he's in a soccer tournament right now, and uh, you know they're they're in first place right now for for the tournament the last couple of days. But I think it's a good uh, good timing this morning to talk a little bit about being competitive, about uh, the fighting spirit, about how to win. You know, some of the winning mentality. So good to have you here, bud. So um, we're on our way back up to the semifinal game, and then um, when they win that, we'll go uh, to the final game. So it'll be exciting. So it brings about the first kind of subject matter, and that is, um, what are you telling yourself? When you go into um, some goals that you've set up or competition that you're involved in or, or, a, or a soccer game, what, what kind of conversations are you having? Um, one of the things that uh, I've spent years doing is talking uh, in, in the affirmative and, and sort of an assertive manner. Uh, there are huge value to speaking in terms of the present uh, value and obtaining of a goal prior to hitting the goal, if that makes sense. So uh, when you're talking to yourself about your goals and you're sort of having these conversations, what's going to happen is uh, you write these goals down and you're feeling pretty excited about what the goals are, right? You're optimistic and you're probably doing, you're probably writing some of these goals late at night when the reality is you can't do anything about it. And so we don't, we don't have any, we don't have the same fears. We're thinking, we're feeling pretty indestructible. We get caught up in the vision of what's going to happen, and then what happens the next morning? Any thoughts? Life hits you. Life hits you? What else? What do you mean by life hitting you, by the way? You're back to reality. It's easy to set a goal when you're sitting on a couch. Life is good that you want to go run. When you step out to run and it's snowing or raining, you decide you don't want to do it because it's hard. Yeah. So yeah. You, you shy back from it. Yeah. So, good example, yesterday um, I got up at my typical 4.45, uh, Jake was, was uh, staying at my house and, um, and he was still asleep, uh, you know, I'm at the gym, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, um, do my cardio workout, do your ab workout, there are some days where you wake up at, you know, pre-5 o'clock and you're like, man, I don't, <laughs> I don't think today's my day, you know, but you do it anyways. Uh, one of the keys to being successful is you have to learn to separate your emotions from your physical behaviors. You've got to just fall through with the physical behavior no matter what happens. Regardless of how you feel, you can't listen to your emotions because your emotions and your fears are liars. They lie to you all the time. You can't do this. This is difficult. You know, those are lies. It's only as difficult as you think it is. And so I got up, and yesterday I didn't feel bad about, uh, about that, but I, I did think for a moment, you know, we've got a long day ahead of us. So I, you know, I woke up there, I did my workout, came home, cooked breakfast, um, woke him up, and we left right away, and we were gone all day long. And, you know, you're sitting in the sun, two soccer games. Uh, you know, we also did school shopping uh, up there in Park City, which is, which is a nice place to do it. Had a ton of fun together. Um, but then uh, we didn't get home last night until very late. And about, I would say, what time was it, Jake? 10 o'clock at night? It was like 9. Uh, about 9.30, uh, something like that. I, I still needed to do my lift workout. So here you are, you know, how do you think I felt by about then? Wiped out. Like I'm taxed, man. I'm wiped out. Uh, but, and, and then, I don't, know, I don't know what happened, but I got about uh, with, a, with a stomach ache, and I, I was feeling horrendous. I mean, for some reason, a lot of pain. I don't know what was going on. Uh, and that just cleaned my clock. I mean, I was feeling, but after that, I, I go downstairs and I'm, I'm in my gym clothes and Jake's like, what are you doing? I'm like, gotta go lift, man. <laughs> and then on top of that, I head to the gym and I've, I've got membership to a few different gyms, uh, but I headed to the one that I typically like to go to and they changed their hours. And so they were closed at 10 o'clock at night. So I drive down there, I get back, uh, and I got to go to another gym. But my point is that these obstacles will constantly present themselves. I got it done. Then about you know midnight, uh, 12:30, I'm finally going to bed again. 
and then you know tomorrow you got to you got to wake up and, and hit it strong again right um, but these obstacles are constantly going to present themselves and you have to have you you have to let your desires overrule all of these things that are going to get in the way you have to, that's why you have to have very concise very clear goals about why you're doing this if you don't have a very detailed uh, picture drawn as to what the vision of, of what you're after is going to look like, then the discipline that it will take to get it done and the work that it will take to get it done will be just too overwhelming and you won't follow through. So it is absolutely key that if there's anything you get good at in terms of setting your goals, it's that you paint the most pristine, specific, uh, date sensitive vision of why you're doing this right and you really detail that out the more vivid that vision is of what you want in the future the better it is you know why why you know as an example why why am I getting up at 445 why am I going to the gym twice a day why am I you know eating you know a perfect disciplined nutrition plan you know what you know what is all this about well I have a very vivid picture of what, um, you know, and I think some people might think, if I said, why am I doing that, you might go, oh, well, you want this body. Man, it's so much, if it was just about that, I think yesterday it wouldn't have happened. Um, yeah, I, I have this ideal of, of, of what I, what I want to look like in 90 days for the competition, um, but it's not about that. It's not about the competition. It's about such a deeper bigger picture. There's so much to be gained from setting a massive goal that you've never done before, that even you question in the onset of whether you can accomplish it or not. The amount of self-confidence gained uh, throughout my life from setting these massive goals that in, that in the onset seem impossible, but then breaking them down day by day and just attacking those goals one at a time, one piece at a time, line upon line, right? Uh, precept upon precept, you know, you, you attack these one piece at a time. You've heard the saying, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? And so I, I'm just being real honest with you. When I set this goal to, to, to compete in this NPC event, uh, it seemed like, Michael, you're probably putting one out there that ain't going to happen. Like, this is a big one. Uh, but I, then you break it down day by day, week by week, month by month, and it's amazing uh, what can happen. But, but the key to that is you have to have some very defined reasons why this has to happen, why it must happen down the road. That's the fuel that keeps you moving through the goal when you don't feel like it. When the, when, when the vision gets a little weak, you go back to, why am I doing this? And for me, I can list out some very deep, meaningful reasons. Uh, you know, again, a big one is doing something that I know I've never done before that's incredibly challenging. Uh, you know, that's compelling to me always. Like, I want to do, I want to do something that pushes me and, and drives me. Uh, it keeps life fresh. It keeps it exciting. It also uh, keeps you sharp. Um, and it builds self-image and self-confidence to put something out there and not just sit around. Listen, the, the world is full of people who talk about big, grand goals all the time but they seldom accomplish any of them. So it drives me, it fires me up to say, I'm gonna go do this huge thing and then follow through and do it. There's also an element of fuel that, hey, I'm doing something I know most people aren't willing to do. That's a confidence builder. Um, the other side is, and I know it's hard to explain, but the amount of inner peace that you get from this type of process is hard to describe. And you might think, what could there possibly be spiritual about, about you know, this, this physical goal? Uh, I'm just telling you, it, it's amazing. Uh, and so, I've, you know, I've gone through some, some turmoil, uh, you know, uh, a year ago, and, um, and just uh, deciding, you know what, I'm going to focus on trying to be the best version of me. I'm going to shift my attentions, uh, my disciplines, my focus to just uh, controlling what I can control. I'm not going to dwell on things that I can't, um, and I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm going to upgrade my life. And I listen. I, I didn't feel bad about my life before. That's uh, you know I, I think you can be um, you know you can live in a state of, of happiness and contentment 
even if you're not where you want to be, right, by focusing on the positive. But there's something just magical about saying, you know what, I'm going to do something. I'm going to shake this thing up. And, um, and so I, I set a series of goals and then just hit those things one at a time. You know, and, and uh, it's amazing how you feel. So what are your goals right now in faith, family, fitness, finance, but also don't forget fun, right? What are some things that are important to you to accomplish right now? And those things will keep fueling your, your life. Um, and then keeping a very vivid, clear picture about what needs to happen. And as you're thinking about these goals, talk as if you are already in possession of these goals. Um, don't talk at, in, in terms of question or ifs or, you know, or, you know, those types of things where you're saying, you know, if I do this or if I win. You know, somebody asked me yesterday, they said, so uh, when are, when's Jake's games tomorrow? And I said, well, when they win the semifinal, uh, and uh, then they'll go to the, the championship and be able to win that at six. That's how I stated it to them, and there was no game. I didn't uh, pre-plan out, Let's let, how do I say this in the, the cockiest, you know, way. Uh, it literally just came out that way, and the, and the person laughed, and they go, oh, you they, they kind of laughed and chuckled. I said, what, what was funny? I said, you, well, you just acted like it already happened. And then I thought, man, you know, years of conditioning, years of trying to focus on setting these goals and then just accomplishing them piece by piece, it does change your vocabulary. But, but you know, as, as the Bible says, your thoughts become your words and your words become your deeds, right? And so as you reverse back a, a high-quality achieving life, you'll find that the words are also high-quality and achieving, and you'll find that the thoughts are also high-quality and achieving. It begins with the way you think. So if you go into the deal saying if, you know, or buts, and, uh, and make excuses, you can't, you can't make excuses and win. You have to choose one or the other. You have to find reasons to win, not excuses not to. And that's a bit of a challenge. So, you know, what are you going to do to really define the specifics about what you want and then lay that, break it down, and piece by piece, day by day, it, it, it is not, no goal you have is overwhelming if you break it down. Uh, you know, it's got to make some sense, right? I mean, I, I set a goal, and that goal was several months out, and it, 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 it was physically possible. It just seemed mentally daunting, you know, initially. Um, but, uh, but you set these goals, you break them down piece by piece, week by week, day by day, it will not be as daunting. What will be is if you let a day go by, or you let a few days go by, or a week go by, and you don't hit those goals, then it becomes more overwhelming. So, um, so don't let that happen. But by the way, you're a person. You're human. Um, so it may happen. You may have days where you don't hit those goals. Then the huge key is being able to forgive yourself, just kind of wipe the slate clean, and start a new day. The great thing about uh, tomorrow is they just they constantly line up. There's another another tomorrow. Uh, in most cases, I mean, the other flip side of that is maybe there isn't. Um, and so what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do about today? Another today is lined up. You know, today was tomorrow. <laughs> and soon it's going to be yesterday. And, uh, and so what are you going to do today to make sure you just hit those, those goals piece by piece? And, man, you feel great when you knock those things down. And, it, and, and the, the emotions follow the, the correct behaviors, right? So if you don't feel good and you don't feel driven and motivated and inspired, you just do the action anyways, how will you feel after the action? The emotions will go from doubtful and fearful and unmotivated, uninspired, to after the action, you'll feel satisfied, you'll feel a sense of accomplishment, you'll feel inspired, you'll feel motivated, and that's the key. Don't listen to how you feel, just follow through with the behavior and do it anyway. Does that make sense? All right. Um, one, uh, one, so bringing us to the last kind of subject matter is, what is the most critical thing you need to be focused on right now? Presets. Presets. That is easily the key element. And, and I'm assuming that convention 
and you attending is in the bank, right? But it's the presets. It's getting yourself zeroed in on, uh, you know, making sure that I'm doing some proper preceding behaviors right now to that event that are going to serve me after that event. And this is the key to being an entrepreneur, is you, you have to do the right behaviors now, the right preceding behaviors, leading up to the desired outcome that you have in mind. So if I want to be in a certain position, you know, three months from now, it's different than the employee mentality. In the employee mentality, you show up to work, every hour that you work, you get paid for an hour. And, and that is such a damaging thing to people mentally because you begin to think uh, in terms of exchanging, you know, immediate exchanges. It's the microwave mentality of an employee where, where I show up and, and I'm really building your dream. If you're an employee, you're building somebody else's dream. I'm going to show up and I'm going to work for you. You're going to pay me a small portion of really what I'm worth to you and what I am worth to me. You're going to pay me a small portion. I'm an investment to you. Um, and, and the world that I live in there is, is a world that is motivated by hate and threats. You're going to, he, he says, you're going to do this or, or else, right? So you show up and you exchange your time, an hour of time for a certain amount of money. Man, I can't imagine what that would be like. I'm glad I've never had a job and know what I'm, I don't want to know what I'm worth an hour to some other human being, right? That's, that just sounds like, uh, you know, going back a few centuries and, and living in the wrong uh, time of life. This is such an amazing uh, time to live. We have so many opportunities. Money and quality of life and experiences are endless. We just have to decide what our worth is, right? And stop exchanging, you know, hours for dollars in terms of some other, somebody else's dream. So what you do one day is you wake up and say, you know what? The, the, the entrepreneurial mindset is... If I want to be somewhere in, in a month or two months or three months or six months, six months, it's it's what I do today that's going to determine my outcome in a month or you know or, or a few weeks down the road. It's not an exchange that works like a job does. You have to put in the activity on the front end of the pipeline so that on the back end you reap the benefits of that. So you know, where, you guys, I'm asking you a question. Where do you want to be? come the end of, of September. That's some of what you need to be thinking right now. Where do I want to be the end of September? Where do I want to be uh, the end of this year? We're only talking now uh, six months out, five, six months out. You need to be asking yourself, how do I want to feel about myself five months from now? And, and what's going to happen with that outcome? Once you define what that outcome is, what, what, what I want to have earned during that time or saved during that time or, or maybe paid off some debt during that time or or lay out a really cool family experience, you know, and, and take, take your kids somewhere. If, you, if you're married, take your spouse somewhere, um, you know, uh, or your sweetheart. Uh, so what is it that you're fighting for? What, what does that look like? Define that as seriously as you possibly can. The more specific, the better, because your subconscious mind can't work on generalities. So you define that very specifically out there. Then you're going to say, what's it going to take for me to get that done? And you reverse engineer a plan of what you've got to do each month, each, each week, each day in order to get to that outcome. And you start breaking it down. And then you continue to remind yourself throughout the process of what that desired end result is, right? So, so that's the key, right? It's the same thing if you want to break it down to, to you know, my kids playing soccer. Uh, you want to break it down to that level. Uh, you know, what's going to keep you working hard and motivated at practice? What's going what's to keep you motivated each day as you exercise certain disciplines throughout each day when you're not even, when no one's watching? You're not at practice. The coach isn't there, but you're practicing certain skill sets and disciplines. And you know, Listen, if, if you're going to be a very successful soccer player, it's what you do in between games and in between practice that will really define you. It's the kid that's showing up uh, to the practices and the games, yeah, that's one thing, but it's, but it's the kid that's doing the work individually behind the scenes when no one's watching. Some of the greatest things that happen in our life that define our life is what we do when nobody's watching. And we've all made mistakes when nobody's watching before. We've all, we've all made poor decisions. But if you can get to the point where you recognize that that doesn't serve you, take a step back and say, you know what, uh, there's always somebody watching. You know, whether it's my father in heaven or it's uh, 
or it's me. I know what I'm doing. And, uh, and, and the way that you get more disciplined about what you're doing when nobody else is watching is, uh, is you define where you want to be, what's important to you, what your goals are, and you stay focused on that outcome. You know, I, as a kid, I had some very specific goals of things I wanted to accomplish in, in my life, even as a teenager. And as a result of that, I didn't get into partying big time. I, I, I'd never even touched a drink of alcohol my entire life. I didn't smoke. It, it was never an issue for me to do drugs because I knew where I wanted to be down the road. And I think my parents did a solid job of reminding me of what those goals were. And so it wasn't a problem. But somebody doesn't have those clearly defined objectives, those goals, then is there a, strongly li a stronger likelihood that they're going to make poor decisions today and, and, and throughout that journey? Yeah, right? So where do you want to be? What do you, what, what's it going to look like from you three months from now and at the end of the year? I think that's key to you really having a, a, a solid next seven days and 30 days is you have to define where you want to be a few months from now and, and by the end of the year. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. So, so you have some goals right now for presets. Um, I think uh, we, when I leave, I'm going to take off with him right now. we got to get up there. Um, but I, uh, I want you guys to do a little inventory. Where's everybody at? And, you know, there's, there's at least a, a handful of people who should be here right now. Uh, take it upon yourself to reach out. And, and do it as a group this morning. Hey, where are you at? Why are you at train this morning? We missed you. What's your goal for preset? Where are you at right now? Are you coming to the next training? These are things that you need to key in on, not only personally, but with those that are around you. All right? Good. Yeah. And by the way, if Jake misses, uh, you, know, there's, you know, success is your boss. There are certain things that it demands. If, if Jake misses a practice during the week, does that have any impact on whether he plays in the game or, or how he participates in the game? If he's, if he's a half hour late for the, uh, the warm-up, do you think he's starting in that game? No. So, again, preceding behaviors. A lot of times we're just thinking about the game, but really the key is the disciplines of the practice and what you do leading up to it, right? So I'd rather show up to... The, uh, the pre-game warm-up, I'd rather show up 15 to 30 minutes early than run the risk that I'm going to hit some unknown factor along the way and, and potentially be late, right? So you got to make those decisions in your business as well. All right? Awesome. Thanks, okay, well, thanks, everybody. Thanks,